Qatar is suspending its mediation efforts between Israel and the militant group Hamas. The Gulf country has been a key player during months of protracted diplomacy aimed at ending the Gaza war. But now it says negotiations have stalled and it won't return to the table unless both sides show they are serious about reaching a deal. The decision has led to renewed fears in Israel for the hostages still being held in Gaza. More than 400 days after they were kidnapped, efforts to bring Israeli hostages home appear to have hit a major setback. Protesters in Tel Aviv marked the grim milestone as Qatar pulled out of negotiations between Israel and Hamas. The withdrawal came after months of deadlock. Now some fear a future without them at the table. Qatar withdrawing is, for us, is a chaos because they were the lead connection to the Hamas leadership in Qatar and the Hamas leadership in Gaza. And now without them, we don't know who's going to be in charge of this threat connection. It's been nearly a year since a one-week truce saw 105 Israeli hostages released and 240 Palestinian prisoners freed. Since then, the death toll from Israel's war in Gaza has risen to more than 43,000. And Israel has killed several of Hamas's top leaders. Attempts to end the bloodshed have seen numerous rounds of negotiations, with the US and Egypt joining Qatar's mediation talks. But without an agreement, Qatar's patience has run out. It says it will only resume mediation efforts when, quote, the parties show willingness and seriousness to end the brutal war. For its part, Hamas has called for a full withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza and a complete end to the war as conditions for any deal, while Israel seeks the return of all hostages and insists on a presence in Gaza. Hopes for a ceasefire relying on either side making concessions or another country stepping up to fill Qatar's role as mediator. Well, for more, let's speak now to Hans-Jakob Schindler. He is a Middle East security analyst and director of the Counter-Extremism Project. That's an independent global policy organisation. Great to have you on the show and good to see you again. Um, who is to blame for the fact that despite months of negotiations, there's been no agreement, there's still no ceasefire and there's still no hostage deal? Look, I mean, what Qatar is here doing is really pulling the plug because nothing has moved. Uh, the last round in October, the compromise uh, that was suggested by the U.S. was rejected by Hamas. So Hamas is essentially not ready to have a deal. The Israeli side is not undifficult, but the last rejection was really Hamas. And as the Qatari ministry spokesman said, the political office of Qatar, uh, of, of Hamas in Qatar really does have no function if there is not a seriousness on the Hamas side for negotiations. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Hamas, though, because who is actually, who within Hamas is even in a position to decide on agreement, considering that Israel has actually killed so many of the group's leaders? Well, I mean, here is the bad news uh, um, from an Israeli perspective or from an international perspective. Hamas as an organization has weakened its, or is weakened only in its physical terror infrastructure in the Gaza Strip. Its global network of finances, its political leadership, the political office, is still absolutely intact. So Hamas as a group can still make decisions, can still negotiate. There is, of course, a question of how much control the political office who is outside the Gaza Strip has over commanders inside the Gaza Strip. But there could have been even small compromises that the, the political office, for example, could have agreed to the exchange of a handful of hostages, as was suggested by the Americans and the Egyptians, to show that it has control. But it wasn't even willing to do this, either because it really doesn't have any control anymore. Then the question is, why are we talking to the political office? Or because the organization still feels with this slow attrition tactics against Israel, it could ultimately prevail. 
What speaks for option two is really Hamas's global call for more demonstration or de demonstrations over this weekend. Now, do you see a player other than Qatar that could mediate more successfully, perhaps? I don't know if it's more successful or not successfully, but it's very clear that Hamas over the last couple of months seems to gravitate for whatever reason a little bit more towards Turkey and away from Qatar. So maybe that is also part of uh, the Qatari assessment that if they continue to be the main mediator, they will be held responsible for failures to reach an agreement, especially now that the Trump administration is coming in and basically handing this, as we say in Germany, hot potato over to Turkey. Let's actually talk a little bit more about um, the Trump administration, because, of course, we've got a few months left of the Biden administration before Trump comes in. Um, how do you see uh, a Trump administration dealing with the situation that we're currently seeing in the Middle East? Do you see huge changes there? To a certain extent. I mean, it was a strategic mistake of Hamas to run out the Biden administration. It was very clear the Biden administration wanted to end this conflict, ideally, of course, before the elections, but definitely before the end of their term in January. So you had a US administration maxima, uh, motivated to the maximum extent to actually get his in agreement done. Not using this window of opportunity from our side was a real mistake. The Biden administration, it is seemed to be conventional wisdom, will give Israel more leeway in what it does, but this may also prove not quite as glorious for, for the hardliners in the Israeli government, Smotrich Ben Kweer, who had celebrated the Trump administration's election, because Trump has made very clear, President Trump has made very clear that he wants this war to end numerous times. He'd said um, he wants Netanyahu to end this thing in Gaza, as he formulates it. So there may actually be more pressure by the Trump administration on the Israeli government going down the line to finish the military operations in Gaza and Lebanon. OK, we'll leave it here. Uh, Hans Jakob, it's always interesting speaking to you. Thanks for uh, joining us so early on a Sunday morning. Uh, Middle East uh, analyst Hans Jakob Schindler, take care. Thank you so much.